Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today uh, I want to do something kind of unique and I just did recently a top 30 original Xbox favorite games deal and I thought I'd do something similar for the Xbox 360 but less games. I, I couldn't do, do a really lengthy 30 games. I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can because it's really uncomfortable for me to sit or stand in uh, any position for a long time. <clears throat> but um, uh, I just did a thing on, you know, my kind of love affair for the Xbox 360. One of my friends, Alan, from Mame Meister, and I'll leave a <clears throat> link for his wonderful channel below. He did wonderful retro game stuff. And, it, it, I mean, literally is a master of retro gaming and knows everything about them. And I was surprised that he said in the comments that he hasn't really had a lot of experience with the Xbox 360. He said, after watching the video, um, you know, I want, would lo love to get one, especially one of those new ones. And, uh, and get a bunch of games for it. So <clears throat> what I thought I'd do for those that either are new to the Xbox 360 and haven't invested a lot of time in it, uh, or maybe those that have had one for quite a while, but, you know, you, you just kind of, for the most part, stuck with what was popular with the Xbox 360 exclusives or games, I thought I'd give you <clears throat> my top 22 favorites. Why 22? And I'll get it down to 20, and I honestly couldn't do it. There's a couple more I wanted to squeeze in there. So I'm going to do my top 22 favorites. Uh, only one of them I don't have a physical copy of, but I have the whole game installed and downloaded digitally into my Xbox 360 320 gig hard drive. But <clears throat> anyway, here it is. I'll try to get right on it. This is for you, Alan, and for anyone else that uh, is just curious about the Xbox. 360 and you've just been you know you've always wanted one or maybe you've had one and you just want to get some more games for it I've got a few hidden gem videos over the years and some of these would be considered uh, you know hidden gems <clears throat> or underrated kind of under the radar games. so there's a combination of AAA uh, and otherwise but I'm gonna go over these <clears throat> as quickly as I can for you here um, and they, they aren't in any order I mean literally I just kind of pull them all out so We'll see how it goes here, but the uh, <clears throat> first one I would say I'll talk about is the wonderful Burnout Paradise, which I just actually put, sh showed this in my uh, Xbox 360 tribute video. Uh, by the time I got my 360, this game and many others were out, and man, what an outstanding value. This, to this day, is one of, by Criterion Games, is one of the best racing games ever made, really high speed, online or offline. Uh, for me, I've played it both, uh, but I prefer it even offline. I've, got, I've, I've unlocked every license, found every billboard, back alley. I've got a really high achievement score in this. I absolutely love this game. It has the most bone gnashing, uh, you know, kind of teeth gnashing, bone crunching car wrecks you've ever seen in a video game. Incredible jumps, wonderful little slow motion segments when you hit these what they call super jumps. Um, I even have a segment in one of my little intros from uh, this wonderful game, Burnout Paradise. I absolutely love it to death. I can't recommend this highly enough for anyone that loves the Xbox 360. You can get it for the PS3 as well. Most of these you can get for the PlayStation 3 as well as the Xbox, but I'll, I'll mention the exclusives as I come across them. The next one is Max Payne 3. <clears throat> now, I love the Max Payne series, and Rockstar kind of went, took it to the next level with Max Payne 3. I even had a little statue deal I got as a special edition pre-order this. This is an incredible game, wonderful graphics, fantastic cutscenes. Uh, it installs on a couple, you have a couple discs that you have to install to play the whole game. I cannot recommend this game enough. The story is gripping, the music is fantastic. It is one of the hardest, most challenging SOBs you could ever play. It's a wonderful game. Um, in fact, I'm on like the second to the last level. I never could quite finish it. I, I need to finish the game. I was trying to find all the hidden gold collectible gun parts. If you find them all, then your guns all turn gold and what have you. But absolutely mesmerizing game. I cannot recommend enough. If you love really hard games and shooters, and Max Payne really invented the whole slow-mo bullet time thing, you cannot beat Max Payne 3. <clears throat> Next game um, <clears throat> is one that I love. I love the, the recent one on the um, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, but this Sniper Elite, especially this edition, the Silver Star edition, which comes with all the fantastic DLC and the Kill Hitler DLC, uh, uh, or Assassinate the Fuhrer DLC as well, 
is an incredibly challenging, wonderful third-person sniping game. Uh, this is even harder than Sniper Elite 3 on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Very challenging, wonderful graphics. Uh, I love World War II games. We certainly don't have enough of them. I cannot recommend this one enough. Uh, Sniper Elite V2 is an outstanding game. If you love stealth and you can set up your position, sniping positions, and then mine the back door with trip mines and what have you, and it's just, it's very intense when they find out where you are and you just have to try to survive or get away as best you can. A really good sniping stealth game that you can't beat, Sniper Elite V2. Um, <clears throat> Far Cry 3. This is, I, I like this even better than Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4 I love because it has a little personal helicopters and a little bit more exp exploration and uh, more vehicles and things you, that you can drive and do, but uh, Far Cry 3 really takes the ultimate German chocolate cake uh, for stories, cutscenes, gameplay. One of the best villains in any video game. Uh, if you got, I mean, literally a handful of games for the Xbox 360, you'd have to get Far Cry 3. This is an outstanding game. I absolutely love it to death. I think I've got about 34, 35 hours in it so far. I still haven't finished the main story, and this is as many hours as I have in it. My nephew was in town recently, and we just went through the co-op missions, just one right after the other, and spent a whole day playing this in co-op. So much fun. Split screen of the couch. But the story in this, excellent shooting, wonderful hang gliding, uh, swimming underwater, everything, great graphics. It really shows how fantastic the Xbox 360 looks and performs this game. Uh, Dirt 2, I just showed this also in my <clears throat> uh, little retrospective thing on the Xbox 360. Now, I, I don't, no, I, actually, I do have Dirt 1, 2, and 3. I don't have the Dirt Showdown. I think that's the only one I'm missing. But, and I just got the new Dirt Rally, although I haven't been well enough to play it, unfortunately. But, my God, if you had to pick three racing games, uh, literally, to go on a desert island and play, this would be one of them. This is the finest Dirt uh, rally type game I've ever seen. It has these raid racing things too, where it has these stadium trucks and cars. I even have a version of my Dodge Hemi Ram truck, uh, like a stadium type truck. They call them raids. Or you just it's like a point A to point B. Get there any way you can across the open terrain. It has uh, narrow rally uh, events as well, and rally cross racing. An outstanding game. The graphics are wonderful. Nothing They have never produced one. Even the new Dirt Rally looks kind of cold and sterile compared to the wonderful, colorful, vibrant, fun, and exciting Dirt 2. They got this one right. The menus alone, the HUD, the graphics, the music, everything in this is it makes for the most perfect racing game you could ever play. And God, my God, these games are so cheap. You've got to play Dirt 2. If you have any love for rally racing, uh, this is a very addictive game. Uh, and I mentioned this one as well in my... Uh, uh, this is the reason why I bought my Xbox 360. And I think it was August, September or August, I think, of uh, 2009 when this game was released. It was the day that Microsoft dropped the price from 399 to 349 on the Xbox 360 Elites with a 120 gigabyte hard drive. And my God, this game... And I went out and bought a new, brand new uh, <clears throat> Samsung... 46 inch top of the line, uh, you know, high resolution TV just to play this. Uh, I, I, I just couldn't believe the graphics on this. My God, it was just, I went from an analog TV uh, and a regular Xbox to playing this on one of the new Samsung's LCD deals. I could not believe the graphics. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I did a wonderful review of this. In fact, I'll have links down below for the few reviews that I've done of some of these games. I'll have links below for them. Uh, I, I haven't done a lot of reviews on my channel, but I do have a few, and typically of games that I really like, like this one. So you can see my review of this, as well as the new Wolfenstein, the New Order review that I did for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One as well. But <clears throat> anyway, outstanding World War II game. This is like, uh, it's like the, the castle, uh, I'm sorry, it's like, it's like Return to Castle on steroids. Beautiful graphics, excellent boss battles. Uh, kind of a semi-open world hub thing where you can kind of do the missions in any order you want. Wonderful RPG upgrade system. This is an absolute favorite. Not only does it have a lot of really cool uh, World War II weapons, 
but you have what's called veil powers, these supernatural powers where you can slow down time, you go into this kind of an alternate world, everything looks different, feels different. I've never seen another game that captures it as well as this by Raven Software, one of my favorite software development companies, the wonderful 2009 Wolfenstein reboot, I guess you can call it. <clears throat> Uh, and I mentioned uh, Forza Horizon also in my last uh, wonderful, this comes in, a, I think it's a steel case, yeah, oh yeah it is, this is a steel case, I pre-ordered this, and I've got all the DLC for it as well, it comes in a really handsome steel case as well, um, a, a wonderful game, <clears throat> this is my favorite racing game of all time, I'll have a link for my review of this down below as well, uh, if, if you've got no other racing game, for the love of God, you've got to get Forza Horizon, now, this particular one only uh, <clears throat> plays at 30 frames per second, but my God, it's the smoothest 30 frames you've ever uh, felt. You don't even miss the 60 frames a second like you do in Forza 4. Uh, outstanding cars, uh, wonderful events. It's a giant open world area in the wonderful, gorgeous uh, America state of Colorado. And there's canyons and open areas by lakesides and open plains like deserts. And it's a perfect array of every type of terrain. You can pull up behind a Porsche in your Corvette, flash the headlights, and instantly goes right into a race right away. Or you can drive to several events or fast travel to where there's giant events. There's a giant music festival hub. Great music, wonderful cars. This game is, like, perfect. If you get an Xbox 360 and can only pick three games, this would literally be one of them. I can't rave about this enough. You can watch my review down below before I get carried away for 30 minutes on that. Uh, Singularity, also by the wonderful Raven Software that did the 2009 Wolfenstein. Uh, th this is one of the most incredible adventures you could ever uh, honestly take part in in a video game. Singularity <clears throat> is a very unique hybrid of a game. Uh, <clears throat> you're kind of a military guy. You're going like a, you know, a commando team. You're flying to this uh, Russian island, there's reports that, you know, a, a helicopter or a jet or something crashed and went down, a helicopter crashed, and you're going there to rescue your mates. And uh, the Russians have been experimenting with this time travel device thing, so you're constantly fluctuating between, like, 1955 and the present day. And you go on this island, there's this hor horrific mystery. The Russians were experimenting with this thing, it went completely out of control, and created, I mean, monsters and creatures and those time travel elements. The graphics are outstanding, and it really shows what the Xbox 360 is capable of. This is an incredible hidden gem, one of the finest, one of the top ten games for the Xbox 360. I mean, no doubt. I love this game to death. I even have a strategy guide for this as well. I, I can't rave enough about this. You can go on. I haven't done a review of this yet. I need to. There are some wonderful reviews of this that you can see. Mark Bustler of Classic Gamer did a really good one for this. Can't recommend Singularity enough by Raven Software. Uh, and I mentioned this in my last you know, video too, the, the game Stoke Big Air Edition. First it was just stoked and then they came out with this Big Air Edition with more mountains, more customization, what have you. This game is very tough and challenging. I, I still haven't unlocked. There's like a couple mountains I just cannot unlock. And I've got really good scores in my racing, but you have to perform all these tricks so it's a combination of like straightforward downhill racing on a snowboard. There's uh, lots of freestyle events and tricks you can do. You can kind of follow the, like follow the leader and then try to emulate all the tricks he does. It's very challenging. But great music, wonderful customization. This is my go-to snowboarding game on the Xbox 360. Now this isn't exclusive to the Xbox 360, but I cannot rave enough about this. There's not a hell of a lot on YouTube about it. There are some videos, and you can watch them. Uh, I, I, sh I really need to do a review of this, but I love this. This is a hidden gem. Oh my God, you probably get this for the cost of a burrito today. Uh, that's the beauty of these Xbox 360 <coughs> games is that they're so damn cheap. So right now is the time to get them, because I'm telling you, like the original Xbox and PlayStation 1 and 2 games, the prices are starting to go up the last two years in those, and it won't, won't be long. It could be a few years, but I could see the prices going up, especially on some of these. Uh, I mean, uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted, which was a multi-plat for the original Xbox, as well as the Xbox 360. There's factory sealed copies going for over $100 of that now for the Xbox 360, because there's not a hell of a lot of 
uh, copies for the Xbox 360 of that game. Um, <clears throat> Call of Duty 2. I mentioned this <clears throat> also in my last round uh, because it's so damn good. I, I kept seeing TV ads of this and I just said, my God, I have got to get Call of Duty 2. Th this is my favorite, to be honest with you, of all of them. I love Black Ops and World at War almost equally. Uh, and that was my first midnight launch. I waited three and a half hours to get my first Black Ops game. I didn't care for Black Ops 2 or the way out sci-fi stuff, but because it was in Vietnam, I loved Black Ops. But Call of Duty 2 <clears throat> was the most perfect World War II experience. Uh, great shooting, challenging as hell, a wonderful game. You can re I've returned to this game so many times. I've played the multiplayer and split screen with my nephews. A wonderful experience. You can get this game so damn cheap. Uh, this is like unmatched to this day. I, I would get an Xbox 360 for no other reason just to play Call of Duty 2. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> here's a wonderful Rockstar game that has LA nailed even more right than the new GTA 5. And that's Midnight Club Los Angeles Complete Edition where you get all of South Central LA. They added made LA even bigger the map with more cars. This is an, a highly underrated game. You can get it dirt cheap. I love the Midnight Club series which originally started on the PlayStation 2 as an exclusive and then by <clears throat> Midnight Club 2 and 3 you could get on the original Xbox. But This is an outstanding game. The, the, the best one in the series. Uh, I, I really would love to see Rockstar make a new version of this but they actually captured LA like perfectly. I mean it's, it's compressed but there's parts of Sunset Boulevard and down in Santa Monica and especially the LA freeway interchanges. I swear to God they're like photorealistic. I, I almost feel like I'm back in LA and I, and I know LA like the back of my hand and they captured whole segments of it very accurately. Outstanding music, uh, even Nine Inch Nails, a lot of really great songs, a top-notch licensed music which only Rockstar, you know, can do because they've got the clout. Uh, wonderful array of cars. This has the best in-car view I've ever seen of a racing game. It's the only game that I like to drive, show, or actually feel comfortable driving where you can see the wheel on the dashboard is this game. It's an absolute masterpiece. As you upgrade the cars, you can get bigger, you know, blower superchargers sticking out of the hood. So when you drive behind the wheel, now you see the, the, the vibrating, you know, uh, hood scoop. One of my intros has uh, my, uh, you know, 77 Trans Am. We, or 79 Trans Am, but you can see the blower coming out of the hood while you're racing it at night. Uh, you really get the sensation of high speed. Yeah, it has a rubber band AI and what have you in it, but still an outstanding game. One of the finest racing games you can play. There's multiple ways you can do these freeway races. It has these point A to point B. Uh, get there any way you can through the central parts of the streets of LA where there's like a smoky uh, big lights in the, in the distance and you just try to head that way any way you can. I, I can't rave about this enough. One of the top three racing games for the Xbox 360, Midnight Club, Los Angeles Edition. Uh, the wonderful game Rage, which I, I love. I love id Software. id and Raven Software are my favorite developers. I pre-ordered this. I followed this development of this for years before it was even available. <clears throat> this has the finest death animations I've ever seen in a first-person shooter. This is, before everyone says, oh, it ripped off Borderlands. This was in development long before Gearbox's Borderlands. In fact, I don't even really care for Borderlands that much and, and traded the game in. But Rage <clears throat> is a unique first-person shooter. Different types of enemies. This guy wakes up in the future, isn't where he is. The whole world has changed. There's all these crazy gangs and mutants. And each gang has their own style of the way they come at you and the weapons they, they, they use. It's incredible. It has one of the coolest RPG upgrading systems for weapons. We can upgrade the weapons and the ammunition as well as have these robotic spiders you throw down the ground and they have like little torrents on them and they follow you around and help you fight. Uh, wonderful sniping missions. It also has a very unusual twisted metal like car combat as well. In fact it has a multiplayer that's all about just the car combat as well as some strange kind of co-op online missions as well. But my God, the campaign in this is awesome. The only platform this game is it operates perfect on is the Xbox 360. Even on the PC and at PS3, it's unfortunately not very good. But a wonderful game and a testament 
to id software is a game rage <clears throat> mafia 2 i've mentioned this in older videos I, I i really need in fact i started playing this again last year and then stopped for some damn reason uh <clears throat> this is one of the finest open world story driven games i've ever played uh, i love anything that has to do with the mafia and the godfather naturally and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> and uh, they really capture the essence of the mob in rising through the ranks of the mob and uh, being in the kind of the 40s from World War II and then later up into the 50s uh, in this wonderful kind of a fictitious town that's like New York between Los Angeles and New York. Very well done. This is an absolute masterpiece and I cannot wait for the new Mafia 3 that's coming out. That may be the only new game I'm going to buy all year. I'll find a way to get it. I don't know how, but it'll be out, I think, in... Um, October, November, but <clears throat> Mafia 2, you can probably get it dirt cheap. This is a special pack. This was the, um, oh, the Platinum Hits. This is the one you want to look for. Hard to find, but it has tons of DLC with lots of extra missions, extra cars, weapons, clothing. I can't recommend this game, or especially this edition. This is one time you want to get the Platinum Hits. It's kind of like the Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition. It has so much to it. Uh, one of my favorite <clears throat> games I got lost in. Challenging, gorgeous graphics. It really is like going back in a time machine with Mafia 2. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> not everyone likes flying games, and there's lots of good ones. Uh, but my, this is my favorite of all of them. On, on, on the original Xbox, I like Heroes of the Pacific. Well, the sequel to Heroes of the Pacific on the original Xbox is Heroes Over Europe on the Xbox 360. This, in my opinion, is my favorite flying game of all time on the Xbox 360. There's so many good ones. I have, you know, a lot of these newer um, Ace Combat, you know, games, and um, I, I can't remember what they're called now, but Assault Horizon, whatever the hell it is. I have some good ones. <clears throat> uh, and, there, and there's other great flying games also <clears throat> uh, on the Xbox 360, but Heroes Over Europe... They really created these giant set-piece moments flying over London with the barrage balloons, larger-than-life moments, wonderful graphics, some of the best menus. I just love the menus alone, the music, gorgeous World War II planes and flying at sunset and sunrise and at nighttime. Uh, it, it's like going in a time machine. If you ever wanted to know what it would be like to be a pilot during World War II, especially over Europe, you cannot beat this. This game is cheap. It's becoming a little bit harder to find now, but it's still relatively affordable, and I would strongly urge you to get Heroes Over Europe. <clears throat> Red Dead Redemption I also mentioned in my little <clears throat> retrospective piece on the 360. Uh, this would be like a top, you know, th three or four games that you'd have to get for the Xbox 360. A wonderful adventure. I don't even think it's available on PC, so I mean, it's either the PS3 or the Xbox 360. You can get it on... <clears throat> on either platform, but my god. Uh, and I still haven't finished this yet. I've got a tremendous 40-something hours in this, and I'm, I'm quite a ways into it, but I, I need to finish it. Uh, I, in fact, I may have to start it all the way over from the beginning. It's just that good. It's a wonderful open-world game in the Old West. One of the finest, most polished AAA Rockstar games they've ever produced. Red Dead Redemption. There's another version that has all these other, you know, Nightmare of the Dead, you know, zombie-type missions, which I, I didn't really want to mix zombies with the Old West, but <clears throat> a lot of people do like it. Uh, and I have some DLC for this as well, but my God, what a wonderful stories. It, gorgeous graphics, and this is in a real time capsule adventure. you you got to own it if you have a 360. Now, <clears throat> this game is hated by a lot of people, but believe it or not, this is one of my top Xbox 360 FPS shooters of all time, and that's Call of War as the Cartel. Now, a lot of people don't like it because it deviated from the Old West roots, um, although the story actually kind of has a lot of Old West areas that it returns to, but in the present day. And it's like the grandson of the McCalls that were in the other Bound in Blood or whatever. But <clears throat> you have a, uh, there's a, a local LAPD cop, you've got a, a, like a DEA agent, there's an FBI agent, you can play as one of three unique characters, each one with their own attributes. This guy is like good with six shooters and, and pistols. This guy is good with uh, <clears throat> SMGs, machine guns, and Uzis and MAC-10s. And then for assault weapons and sniper rifles, this uh, woman, Kim, 
uh, is wonderful with those. So you can this game has replayability big time because you can play as each of the characters. And what's cool is that uh, I was shocked when I played it through the second time. I played a different character, and some of the missions instead of like being down in the valley, you know, up close, you know, behind all these cars and trucks. You're now, you know, Kim up on a hill with a sniper rifle, and you can see the whole thing taking place. So it really inspires replayability. They're kind of like crooked cops and FBI's, DEA agents, and they're all on the take. You can you have to try to steal contraband and money and things on the different crime sites without being caught. It's very unique. This is a strange, kind of like Battlefield Hardline, a very unique urban shooter. Some of the best car driving on rail type shooting sessions. I've ever played. It's a really cool game. I love this game. I've played this so much. I, I This is one of my absolute favorite games, probably even in my top ten games of all time list. It's on the same kind of strange Chrome engine that they did Dead Island on and the other Call of Juarez games. So it has an interesting depth of field effect. Some, some people like it, some don't. I really like it. Uh, it's a very adult game. Lots of swearing and violence. Horror houses. Uh, everyone getting blown away, their heads blown off. I mean, it's like an over-the-top, very violent urban shooter. It's not very politically correct, and I think that's a, another reason why a lot of people don't like it, but I love it. Call of War is the cartel. Real hidden gem. <clears throat> this is one of the finest FPS games I've ever played. That's Battlefield Bad Company 2. I love the first one, too, but the second one <clears throat> is the most perfect single-player Battlefield game ever ever created. I, I absolutely love, absolutely love this Battlefield. Bad Company too. Uh, destructible environments, just tons of weapons and ammo laying around. A great story, uh, just wonderful set piece moments that you cannot beat. This is uh, one of the most perfect first person shooter experiences I've ever had. Uh, it's just a wonderful game. A lot of people just uh, just played this for the multiplayer. Don't overlook the solo campaign. In Battlefield Bad Company 2. Speaking of another game, so you know, I mentioned I have one Call of Duty, I have one Battlefield, and I want to pick out my favorite Medal of Honor game. Believe it or not, is this 2010 Medal of Honor with a modern story uh, of our you know American troops in Afghanistan up in these mountain passes and caves. The graphics are outstanding. This game is challenging as hell too. Now I played this and beat this on the PlayStation 3 version. I've got right here Medal of Honor. Uh, here and loved it. In fact, it came the PS3 version comes with Medal of Honor Frontline, all remastered in HD. You can download on the PlayStation 3. But I also have the Xbox 360 version, which looks outstanding. Uh, and it wasn't as this version's not as buggy as the PS3 version. I had a game-breaking bug that really kind of fucked me on the PS3 version. Well, this one plays a lot smoother, but this is highly recommended. Really realistic. I really felt like I was in, up in the mountains. I mean, you really get the, the feeling of elevation. You can call in, you know, these airstrikes and use these laser targets and just all the modern weapons. I actually prefer this over the Call of Duty Modern Warfare games, all three of them. I really love this game. I also loved its follow-up, Warfighter. But Warfighter, the story, just I can't compare to this. And at the end of this, I mean, I had tears in my eyes by the end of this game. It's The story's that good. <clears throat> Um, getting down to the end here, uh, now a lot of people, this is another controversial game, but I love it. It's my favorite Need for Speed game in the entire series, and that's Need for Speed The Run. It, it is, I mean, literally is like the cannonball run. It's a race from San Francisco to New York. Uh, it's beautifully captured. You're driving across the United States. Uh, and beautiful, the Rocky Mountains and the deserts and the, the autumn leaves up in, up, you know, in New York and Pennsylvania going across the road. Just beautiful scenery. Some of the best racing. The car is handled better in this than they do in the wonderful Most, uh, not, well, yeah, most Wanted and um, uh, the Hot Pursuit that came out around 2011 or so. <clears throat> but great handling, kind of like the cars in Need for Speed Shift, which I also love. Uh, I, I've played this multiple times on hard, on easy, I've replayed it, I love the challenge mode. It's it, my favorite go-to racing game. I've played the hell out of this online and dominated online with this, surprisingly. I really put more time into this than any other game online. Uh, I absolutely love this game. A couple of my friends I've told about it, they played it and were shocked. And three of my friends have also agreed that they love it and it has become their favorite Need for Speed game as well. Don't listen to the jaded reviews on this. It is quite good. 
Uh, just a little different. Try to introduce a story mode. There's even a couple sections we can get out of your car with quick time events, which some people liked or didn't like, but I really like it and can't speak highly enough about this. Uh, I, I need to do a proper review of this one. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> now we're getting near the end here. Uh, the, the wonderful game, the Bureau XCOM Declassified. This is will always have a place in my hard drive of my Xbox 360. <clears throat> a very unique game. 2K Marin actually closed your doors because of the poor sales of this. I cannot recommend this game enough. You play as an FBI agent, kind of just like the same premise of um, <clears throat> The X-Files, the old TV show, The X-Files, where you play as an FBI agent where you're just going after, you know, aliens <clears throat> and phenomena like that, but you play as an FBI agent back in 1962, ironically the year that I was born, and they really captured this kind of the FBI all smoking cigarettes and coffee and the very straight-laced serious agents, <clears throat> and it's like this kind of a 50s, 60s sci-fi kind of vibe to it, where the aliens landing, flying saucers, these elaborate deals all over America, and the government's trying to cover it up and, and deal with the aliens at the same time get to the bottom of it. A surprisingly good story. Some of the best squad-based tactical shooting I've ever seen in a game. Wonderful weapons, great graphics. This is a mesmerizing game. I even have some of the DLC for this as well. Uh, I, I can't recommend this game enough. This is one of my favorite Xbox 360 games and truly a hidden gem. XCOM, uh, the Bureau, Declassified. <clears throat> and this is one of the last games, second to the last game, this will be number 21, is the wonderful Rockstar game, L.A. Noir. Now, some people don't like this. I, I, I'm surprised that they don't. I, I'm a huge fan of this. <clears throat> L.A. Noir is another time machine. You go, going back <clears throat> to the late 50s, I'm sorry, I think it's a, a late 40s, kind of like L.A. Confidential. Uh, the movie, and it, it, you, you, I mean, you really get the feeling of they created this giant Los Angeles with incredible, you know, photorealistic detail of, of L.A. as it was back in the late 40s with all the authentic vehicles and cars and landmarks at that time, and it's a wonderful giant open world. I, I mean, in and of itself, that alone is wonderful, these random police calls and missions you can go on. But then it has this gimmick where they did this, it was one of the first games to really do this face capturing, motion capture deal. And it has these investigations where you grill someone in a police room and you're, you're looking for answers, you know, to, to the questions, to find out if they're guilty or not. And you study their faces to see if they're lying, if they're exaggerating, if they're telling the truth. You can decide to lean on them, put pressure on them, or they may clam up, or they may spill their guts. So it's so many, you just have a lot of uncertainty when you're playing it. But I, This was one of the most immersive and wonderful, I was sick. I, I didn't play this for like a year after I got it. I had all the DLC and season pass. I have everything for this. I've got my probably one of my highest achievement scores of any game for this particular game. But <clears throat> once I started playing it, my God, I, I got sucked in big time. This is a masterpiece. It, it comes on three discs for the Xbox 360. It's a, it's a, it's a big game. Uh, but a gorgeous game. I, I can't recommend this enough. Wonderful graphics. The open world is a little empty and sterile at times compared to like GTA 5 or even GTA 4, but they really got the, the, the late 40s right. Uh, and, and wonderful music and graphics and production values. This is a real masterpiece and a must-play game on the 360. Last game I'll mention, <clears throat> which I don't have a physical copy of, but I'll, I'll just you know show this. A picture of it. I have the whole game downloaded. When I first started the games with Gold Program, I think it was the first game I got the entire game downloaded because it had some weird patch issues and I wanted the best version of it. So I permanently have this in my hard drive because I love it. It is my favorite Xbox 360 exclusive, and that's the game Crackdown. Now, I've never played Crackdown 2, which is the identical city but slightly different and with zombies. <clears throat> they didn't go to extremes with it, but it's, it's, it's good. But the first one, uh, you really feel like a superhero. You can level your little guy up. He, he like jumps. He's more powerful. And you can concentrate and focus on leveling him up in different areas. 
They have these little things called orbs that are up in high locations. You can't figure out how to get to them. You platform, the wonderful platforming to try to get to them. And each one of them you get, it helps you level up where you can jump even higher and more and what have you. It, it, it's fantastic. The, the game is an absolute gem. The game cracked down. I love the graphics. It's an over-the-top, almost a comic book type graphic novel feel to it. Uh, over-the-top violence and gangs. Uh, to this day, it is one of the best reasons to own an Xbox 360. It was on the, the, the box. I don't have the box art here. I'll, I'll show the box art here in my <clears throat> graphic. But uh, the box art looks terrible, like a cheap budget game. So when I came across it initially with Xbox 360, for years I passed on it because of the horrendous box art. This looks cheesy as fuck. I, I, who wants to play this? Uh, and then I watched Mark Bustler, classic game from, did a review of it. And I laughed so hard. I mean, he saw the same thing that I saw in the game. And I had to have it. I went out and played it, and I played the hell out of it. And I have all the DLC stuff for it and everything. It is so cool. You've got to play Crackdown. Uh, you can get it relatively cheap. Crackdown 2, I've heard, is good. Some people really like it, some don't. But the first one is a reason to own the Xbox 360. It is my favorite exclusive, along with the Forza exclusives. Uh, for the Xbox 360. So that's 22 games that I'd highly recommend. I could do another, you know, 22 of these easily. Uh, <clears throat> many of you know the 360 for its wonderful games. A lot of everyone likes you, typically Halo. I'm not a big Halo fan, although I see why people like it. And I don't do a lot of online gaming anymore, but to me the Xbox 360 is a powerhouse. It is my go-to modern system. And if you have any affinity for it, start collecting now. The games are cheap and well worth getting. You won't regret it. It's a wonderful system to own. And thanks to my wife, I'm going to have this Christmas one of the new Xbox 360Es with a 500 gigabyte hard drive to open under the tree this coming Christmas, which I'm very excited about. She got it early because we're afraid that they may sell them out. And then you'll see them on eBay going for, for bucks, which I could see happening. So... Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. That's my top uh, 22 Xbox 360 games, and I highly recommend. Uh, this is for you, Alan. I did it especially for you in particular. I haven't slept very well. I've been up, you know, just day and night watching YouTube videos and reading old gaming magazines and stuff. It's been a tough time for me, but I want to get in front of the camera <clears throat> and do this because uh, it, there's so many of us that are just curious about these games, and we just, you know, we go, oh God, there's so many games for the Xbox 360, you don't know where to begin, so this will give you a good head start. And there's many, like I said, there's so many others that I could recommend as well. So thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy your games, no matter what they are.